Hi there, my name is Brooks from Character Design Forge. It isn't always easy to have time for the things that we love, so likely a title like Making Time for Your Art intrigues you. No doubt at some point when sharing your art, someone has told you, wow, I wish I had time to do that. And yet you probably feel like you don't have enough time to do the things that you're passionate about yourself. Now at the moment I have the opportunity to create and share a lot of things when it comes to art. I have a weekly comic at denizencomic.com, character designs each week, a creature design project that I'll be able to share with you guys soon, videos and articles like this for Character Design Forge each week and actually every day this month. All of that on top of the normal workload from client work and freelancing. So how do you think I was able to afford the time to consistently make these things each week? Well, the answer is not because I was bored, and I didn't always just have time available. I already had a busy life already. Now, I'm using my example because it breaks my heart when people say, wow, I wish I had time for that. People that say that they don't have time for something usually fall into two categories. The first are those who actually are saying that they would like to have time for something, but aren't prioritizing it. For example, I've never had a strong affinity for music, but I would love to be better with it. My wife got me a banjo for our anniversary last year, and while I've messed around with it a little bit, I haven't had the time to learn the banjo. That's simply because I haven't prioritized it being busy with art-related work, but perhaps in another season, I can make time to learn the banjo or learn to make electronic music. If you're already determined to have time for the thing that you love doing, you need to prioritize the time for it. But the second category of people, though, are those who genuinely wish to have time each day to do something, but feel that they don't have it, and that it would be impossible to find it. If you feel that way, then in a sense, you're actually right. That's because you cannot find time to do something. Can you look at your day, say yesterday, and think of a time period you were doing absolutely nothing? Naturally, you filled that time with something. If you take away our obligations at school or work, eating and sleeping, travel time, what are you left with in the day? Now, most people fill the remaining time with friends or family, recreation, sports, watching something, games, chores, errands. And the even smaller moments in between you may spend on your phone. We've actually trained ourselves to be always occupied, never unstimulated. And at any lull in the day, you've likely found yourself reaching for your phone or consuming something. Now, I'm not here to lecture anyone, but I do want to make the point that we are naturally prone to fill our time. That means it's impossible to find time. We can only make it. The first thing that you can do is examine your priorities. Is having the time to work on what you love important to you? Then something less important is going to have to give. And you'll need to stick with it. For example, are you spending a lot of time consuming something? Is it Netflix, YouTube, TV, or gaming? For me, if I wasn't careful, I could fill all of my available time with video games because it's just a medium that I really love, if you couldn't already tell from my desk. I haven't given up on games in any respect, but I've heavily moderated the time I spend with them and relegated them as something less important. The next thing that you can do may sound extremely radical, but I want you to consider it closely and understand the potential that this has to change your life because it's genuinely changed mine. Consider this scenario. At the moment, you may be making time for what you love at the end of the day. It may be late in the night. It may be because that's when you first get a moment to breathe, or because that's the time that everyone else is asleep and it's finally quiet. The habit of working late at night and depriving yourself of sleep for the sake of your art has become so pervasive that it feels like a part of the culture for certain artists. You might say that it's because you're a night owl and the time that you're most creative is at night. I was that way for a long time, especially when I was a teenager making comics. 9.30 p.m. to 3.30 a.m. was my carved out spot, and honestly, I was worthless the following day. But have you ever thought about taking that same amount of time that you spend late in the evening and placing it first thing in the morning, before the first thing that you're obligated to do? You might outright reject that idea because it's too early. But consider this. The reason that you feel creative at night is because of habit. You've trained your brain to be creative at that time, but that's programming that can be easily changed. After just two weeks of waking up two or three hours earlier than you normally do, your brain will adjust, and this time will actually be twice as productive. The reason for double the effectiveness is a cycle. When the first thing that you have to do in a day is something that you don't want to do, for example, being at work by 8 a.m., you don't necessarily look forward to waking up. You might wake up with just enough time to make it to work. Throughout the day, you have ideas that you'd like to work on, 
but because of the other things you're distracted with, your cognitive load gets heavy. You might outright forget an idea you have because you weren't able to record it, or you get frustrated because you aren't able to work on it right now. Work ends and you have errands, perhaps a family, or other things that demand your attention, until finally you get the time to work on your art. You work late into the night because this is the time precious to you, and if you go to bed right now, the next thing you have to do after this is wake up and go to work. So you work until you can't stay awake, then wake up tired to do something that you don't want to do. The cycle wears people down, and you may be so used to it that you don't notice the alternatives. You wake up at 5.30, knowing you have to be at work by 8 o'clock. You're groggy at first, but after some coffee or a quick workout, you're awake. The night before, you prepared for what you wanted to work on this morning. You wrote it down and left it near your work area. While you were sleeping, your brain has actually been working on it, which is something our brains really do, so it's even more present in your mind. You spend the next two hours, free of distractions, working on what you love. And then you go to work, previously the first thing you did in a day, with the satisfaction that you were able to work on what you love first thing. Your mind is now more clear to be present at your job, but also to think about what you'll work on the following morning. You record your ideas and leave them for yourself. You're tired at the end of the day and actually go to bed earlier, excited that the next thing that you'll do when you wake up is the thing that you love. I've come across very few people who couldn't make this change in their schedule. I ask of you to at least give your body two weeks to make this change. The results are going to be amazing. One final note, especially to younger people watching this video on the topic of time. Never allow someone to tell you in reference to something that you've worked on, wow, it looks like someone has too much time on their hands. If you worked on something that you love, you were productive, you learned something, felt good about making it, or were proud with the end result, you did not have too much time on your hands. You used your time effectively. That person probably said so out of a place of jealousy and are sore that they spent the same amount of time perhaps watching TV. You don't have too much time on your hands, you aren't strange, you used your time for something meaningful and important to you. That's it from me today. I'm making new videos every day this month on characterdesignforge.com. Subscribing on YouTube lets you know when they're available. As always, I'd love to hear your questions and struggles, so leave them in a comment or send them in a message. Thank you for watching, and have fun creating.